I mean to the leadership and when I was a little one uh, I wanted to be doctor friends so as far as I remember and then uh, uh, during my school years I was uh, very active uh, all the time and, uh, in school, in my school and uh, I became a student in Moscow State University and also uh, active in uh, our student life but um, Later on, I was, uh, of, uh, every time I thought, you know, how I can apply my knowledge uh, to improve uh, the people's life, uh, to uh, make my country better. That was within the Soviet Union, and uh, my country was not like, uh, uh, let's say, Latvia or Lithuania, and uh, in, of a uh, role model used to have there, so for the development. After the collapse of USR, I became uh, uh, the first ambassador to the United States. Uh, although my uh, uh, such a very high position in my life was also to be member of the uh, board of the foreign minister of the Soviet Union. I was in charge of UNESCO activity of the Soviet Union. So, I mean, uh, my career was uh, really uh, in, uh, in touch with the course of the country, uh, using my background, my leadership skills, my knowledge, and uh, I very much bought my uh, university, uh, Moscow State University, where I got uh, uh, my, all my degrees. Uh, my country was uh, two times in very difficult position after independence. Uh, that was a critical time when uh, people fed up with the corruption, with the uh, uh, client uh, sort of uh, governance of uh, uh, the former presidents. And uh, uh, we uh, have gone through the Tulip Revolution in 2005 and I took the leading position there and 2010 was absolutely critical of the of, uh, criminal regime um, uh, has done the worst for the nation they have stolen all the assets they uh, killed people they killed even their uh, of uh, such a colleagues let's say so uh, the, the president's uh, chief of staff was killed, burned down. So, I mean, the situation was absolutely unbearable. And all of us, opposition parties, united under the umbrella of united uh, uh, opposition. I was the uh, only voice of opposition in the parliament, leading the uh, opposition fraction in uh, our parliament. Uh, for, uh, expressing all the concern of opposition. The president was not cooperative. He doesn't like to, speak, to talk to opposition straight. So, uh, 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 7 of April 2010, we became, uh, um, as uh, we, uh, we, we've been, uh, we took the power. We took the power and, uh, uh, because uh, president, uh, it was tragedy, uh, 7 of April. People, uh, people say, and uh, Putin also, President Putin expressed once that the uh, Arab Spring has started from Kyrgyzstan. Yes, uh, probably, because uh, we've been really fed up with all the uh, such a uh, violation of uh, human rights, corruption in my country, and uh, people came to the uh, Central Square uh, against uh, this power but uh, been met uh, with the shots uh, from the White House uh, windows. 87 of them died in front of the White House. Uh, this uh, power collapsed uh, that the parliament uh, was, uh, resigned, uh, uh, just collapsed and uh, the president uh, uh, has uh, run away. So we took the power as interim government. We, uh, uh, decided that uh, we will introduce in half a year a uh, new parliament, uh, I mean, we will elect a new parliament. We will introduce a new uh, constitution with a parliamentary system. That was our decision far before 
and uh, we'll conduct also presidential elections and uh, uh, that was our plan and uh, in one and a half years I, for, I was as leader of the interim government uh, and later on as president uh, I, uh, I, uh, I must tell you we have succeeded and uh, everything uh, went uh, uh, like by schedule and because all our commitment to the goals, to the promises to the people. And when someone asked me uh, why, how you succeed, I would uh, uh, respond uh, uh, just uh, uh, straight that uh, because of uh, fair uh, commitment, because we've been honest, because uh, I've done everything by law. I didn't uh, um, I didn't say any uh, wrong, uh, I didn't done any wrong step uh, back or left or right. Uh, what we have promised, we've done, and uh, we've done this uh, step by step, and we introduced a new uh, uh, constitution, referendum we have passed through, we uh, have elected new parliaments in half a year, we have built a new type of uh, governance, parliamentary. Five parties come to the parliament, built uh, the parliament. Three parties built a governing coalition. So this is new rules of the game. We are learning. And so when the president was elected, I passed the power to him. And that was the first ever peaceful transfer of the power in my country. Uh, so, uh, for many things uh, I've done uh, uh, over this one and a half years, and uh, there have been very difficult decisions, uh, which uh, sometimes I have taken solely because uh, nobody wants uh, to involve, nobody wants to be part of this decision. I uh, do remember that uh, when uh, clashes have uh, been in the south of my country, between two communities. Uh, um, the international community has uh, insisted, uh, and Uzbekistan also insisted, to have an uh, international inquiry, international commission to uh, uh, look at uh, the, the situation. And so uh, all my comrades, uh, they uh, just uh, didn't uh, like to be part of this decision. And I took solely this decision myself. And, uh, uh, time shows that uh, that was absolutely the right decision. Uh, today we have uh, such a uh, conclusion of this inquiry that uh, there was no genocide there, no war of uh, type of uh, crime, so, and uh, crime which has been done and should be uh, uh, adjust, uh, should be taken to the court, uh, just court. So, the, uh, that sort of uh, momentous uh, in my presidency, uh, they've been uh, difficult, uh, but uh, I might tell today that they've been right. Do you think, I'm just going to move this forward a little bit, do you think that the fact that you were, uh, that you are a woman impacted how you acted as, how you ruled as a leader, and do you think that it impacted the ways that other people viewed you as a leader, especially in light of your remarkable um, transferring of power peacefully? And so if you could reflect on that a little bit. That would be... I think uh, of, uh, uh, today uh, still uh, people asking uh, how it is possible in such a uh, country with the uh, uh, Muslim uh, of, um, Islamic background uh, uh, with the authoritarian uh, past uh, uh, to have uh, women as president. Uh, uh, I was uh, elected. Uh, and very popular vote, and uh, uh, I think it is possible. My country uh, has uh, shown the trust uh, to me, for, to, they know me uh, for many years on the political scene, and uh, in this transition time, I was a leader uh, leading um, five, seven parties in the opposition, and uh, uh, before, and as interim, uh, leader, uh, I uh, was uh, leading uh, a bunch of uh, people who doesn't like each other, but uh, uh, sort of my uh, uh, 
natural uh, women's uh, features like uh, tolerance, uh, uh, resilience, uh, not just mine, but uh, every woman have, uh, has uh, such uh, features. So th that was uh, extremely important in this uh, volatile time, uh, uh, such a time very hot, uh, very controversial, and uh, I need a goal. I need to not to, to disconcentrate, but focus uh, of, uh, on the task to lead the nation from one uh, critical point to another. And I didn't care about uh, other things. I just knew that uh, that uh, uh, the, the country's fa fate is on my shoulders uh, today. So, and I should bring them to another part. Uh, uh, of the shore, so and uh, uh, I think this is uh, mother's instinct also. This is instinct of uh, everyone who take care of their children, of their ch children like uh, nation. Do you think that the fact that you're a woman did it impact the way that others uh, treated you while you were uh, in positions of power? Yeah, I uh, I, I, I must tell you that uh, my nation was. Uh, sort of uh, very noble to me. Uh, nobody uh, was uh, challenging me uh, uh, in that time, of course, uh, sort of uh, position, uh, position became uh, uh, crime, uh, criminals. So, uh, but uh, everyone was very supportive. And uh, uh, until today when I'm uh, uh, ex-president, I go to the villages, I go to the people, everyone, uh, 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 wants to have a picture with me, respect, and everyone remembers that uh, in the most critical uh, time of my country, uh, I led uh, the nation, and uh, uh, regardless of women or men, and uh, we are proud that uh, women was uh, on the helm, and uh, I'm sure that uh, it will impact on hundreds, uh, thousand girls, young women, that it is not a mission impossible to be on the helm and uh, because I, I was let's say successful I have succeeded this difficult time then uh, they will, uh, the nation will know that uh, look uh, it's better than uh, sometimes than uh, men if the man is there uh, on the helm then uh, uh, they might uh, be uh, of such an unavoidable contradiction sometimes, and especially in such a dramatic time. So uh, everyone was uh, very cooperative, uh, very consensual. Can you describe a situation in which you or your uh, party had to construct a, a bridge with either a group or an individual that was completely opposed to your political ideology? someone an extremist or something where you had to somehow reach out? Is there an instance that you can think of and how did you go about doing it? And what were some lessons that you learned from that experience? Certainly, when you have such a dramatic time, you can convert uh, uh, for some part of the nation to enemies. They are your nation still and uh, you should, uh, uh, especially when you are overcoming such a difficult time, when you are, uh, you are building the uh, branches of the power because uh, uh, other countries will not uh, recognize you. It was time when, uh, uh, right after April 7, 2010, when our allies, the closest, uh, who consider uh, us strategic and we consider them strategic allies, they didn't allow us to come to the regional meetings because uh, sort of they thought what kind of coup d'etat who came to the power and they should uh, approve themselves of the international forum. So we've been in the situation uh, uh, very critical. Uh, for in front of our opposition within the country also. So we're supposed to be united, uh, build up such a consensus to have a united uh, power within the country. And then we'll be recognized by the international uh, partners. So, um, of course, uh, we had such a time, of course we had such a people, but uh, we found some ways uh, to, uh, to, to be together. Uh, to be, uh, uh, it was the question about the territorial integrity also of the country, about the unity of the nation. So such critical issues come straight when you have uh, trouble and problems. So it's, uh, uh, we have
tough fault that you come on that you choose them. And given your strong commitment to democratic values and human rights, how are you able to approach or connect with groups that are that aren't necessarily holding those same views? How can you is there a time when you needed to reach out to someone who didn't believe in democracy, didn't believe in human rights, and how did you negotiate with them given your commitment to those values? It comes uh, through the time. Uh, they are analyzing, they are uh, looking, watching, and so they do realize that uh, we got a, a support, we got a commitment from other countries. Uh, when we uh, had a clashes in the South, uh, right after uh, we uh, uh, convened International Donor Conference, many countries came to help us. Uh, we, we would not overcome all these uh, problems ourselves. And, uh, I do believe that uh, um, uh, any your enemy, any your opposition, uh, they would uh, uh, think that uh, uh, this is the power which has uh, trust, which uh, convinced others. Uh, so I mean, this is uh, the time when uh, uh, even blind people, even stupid people would uh, uh, realize that uh, for the sake of the nation, for the sake of the unity of the nation, you should uh, be together. Um, yesterday you spoke so eloquently about quotas, women's quotas. Um, why are they so important and what would you say to even those women's rights activists that think that we shouldn't have quotas because they're against equality? In our part of the world, uh, for, uh, we are from Asia, we are uh, from the country of Islamic background uh, and Islamization grows in my country as a part of uh, uh, search for identity. Uh, we can't live without quota. I think quota was decisive, vital even for the European countries. And if someone uh, thinks that they don't uh, need, that is up to them. But uh, otherwise, in our part of the world, we never ever women will be promoted to some positions. When we are now in the power, and it's happened so, uh, for, with my introduction to the parliament, we have uh, uh, chairwoman of the Supreme Court, we have prosecutor general, we have governor of the National Bank, and we have uh, chairwoman of the National Audit. So all those controlling positions now are in the hands of women which is really very rare probably case even for some developed countries. Uh, we are not still 40% or, uh, I don't know, 50-50 by 2050. No, not yet. But we have quite, uh, um, quite a, a women on very important decisive positions. Now, we are uh, in force to bring up other women, so, and I am uh, uh, full of enthusiasm that uh, we would raise a new generation of women uh, striving to, uh, to, to, to help to other millions of young girls. Do you think having women in, in that number of decision-making positions has an impact on good governance and cor fighting corruption and sure. transparency? Sure. If so, why? Sure. Uh, for, um, I do believe that uh, why I, I, uh, I have promoted those women, because uh, we've been uh, a victim of corruption, all of us. It's not just the women uh, victims, women also are uh, part of uh, this corruption process for sure. Uh, I still uh, remember very well the remark which uh, I've heard from South African women that, uh, look, um, uh, when you have husbands uh, working in tax, customs uh, agencies, in business, and one day uh, for your family started uh, to get, uh, uh, for not a one day, but uh, steadily uh, more and more uh, such a good and suddenly uh, you, you, you receive uh, so much uh, and wife should be very careful to ask how it's possible, uh, what uh, this come from. So this is exactly the process which we are going through. So in 20 years people who have been absolutely poor, they are working on such a positions, uh, they got uh, uh, fortunes. 
and wives should be watchdog also at home. That's what I do understand. But uh, uh, bringing women on this uh, position, like prosecutor general, chairwoman of the court, uh, that was also absolutely vital. And uh, governor of the National Bank, because uh, of uh, our banks uh, co being converted to to be laundromats, uh, not the banks. And uh, uh, for women have uh, hands uh, clean or cleaner, and uh, women are. Uh, of um, such a of, uh, tight, uh, of, uh, tend to be uh, fair, and uh, I do believe in that. And uh, uh, we have now 23% of women in the parliament. They raise these issues uh, uh, of women, children, elderly, uh, handicaps. So men doesn't uh, bring these issues uh, to uh, uh, the national agenda. So I do believe that. Uh, of women as part of uh, the decision making, of women part of governance, uh, is absolutely vital for any country and especially in developing countries. It promotes women, uh, for, uh, behind them thousands other, sometimes illiterate, sometimes uh, such a women uh, uh, in uh, very traditional uh, um, beliefs uh, and uh, of women who would uh, probably think that men would do for them everything. So this is serious. When a country has experienced um, violence, such violence as we're seeing today in Egypt and across the region, and as you had experienced as well, how can how can the country come together afterwards? How can civil society play a role in bringing the country together afterwards to then go on to build those institutions that will protect all citizens within the country? Unfortunately, my country uh, has a, a very strong uh, civil society. We have uh, uh, about 5,000 NGOs, and most of them led by women. Uh, they are very active, uh, forward going, uh, uh, such a uh, very uh, articulated women and uh, in such a time of uh, 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 especially difficult time uh, which we have passed through. Women have been absolutely part of this process and uh, uh, we can't reach sometimes people, we can't uh, as the government, uh, uh, we can't do all the work ourselves and uh, uh, NGO communities there who can reach out uh, uh, for people uh, throughout the country in remote places, uh, uh, national minorities, and uh, uh, so uh, this is uh, something what uh, we can't understand how we would live without uh, civil society. So for my country, this is absolutely essential part of our society. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah, wonderful. Thank you. That's thank wonderful. you very much. Thank yeah. you so thank much. You. I really appreciate yeah. thank it. Thank you. Thank you very much.